quit on the goat, right eh? Hello there. Episode two. Eighteen seventy in July. Now uh, you've only seen the first episode, and I've got my out around it square here again of where its safety starts. And, and to go with it, I've put a, a cone, which is this around the other way, so you see how it closes up. We spoke about this now being the um, envelope. So, the pilot hops in. And varying depths of danger when he gets near the aeroplane. Uh, so obviously if it's a student pilot or going out further, so uh, to an experienced pilot with say 10,000 hours, uh, the cone goes in and out or in and out. Uh, it's a floating circle, the next one of safety, but I'll put one in here and a student pilot, the safety is going to drop by 50% if he's on his own and he's solo. Uh, if he's, if, so we'll make our next circle in and say that, so um, oh, I'm going to say it's 50% because and we can colour that in there of our cone. Now, the pilot's responsible for everything. So, uh, we, what makes the pilot unsafe? One thing is uh, training. Okay, so You've all been trained, but if you get trained, you've got to listen. You've got to be passionate about it. You've got to think of all the what ifs and not only just rely on your instructor. It's a progressive thing. So, training is number one. And we have, when I'm, and, and you're, so we, I'm talking about attitude. I don't know whether it has one or two T's. Um, so your, your attitude is really important too, whether you're in the right frame of mind for a start. So all these things go off to something else, frame of mind. Um, and so if you come to work angry or pissed off about something, uh, you're in a different as if you come happy. So if you're annoyed with your employer or uh, your wife or your husband or whoever, your partner or the kids or you've got money problems or whatever, it affects your frame of mind. And you need to be, just apply yourself to flying once you come in the gate of the airport or wherever, uh, just you've got to train yourself to drop all that and just do your job. Um, so, attitude, frame of mind, and uh, how you approach it. Being positive is really important and positive and positive about training. So you've got to have a receptive vessel up here to take it in and make the effort to uh, get it on board. Because no doubt your instructor's going to get, uh, put it in and as you get, get more information, you realise that you can ask better questions as well. Okay, so it's all about attitude and you applying yourself. Then it comes down to health. So, 
you've got to not only be in the right frame of mind, you've got to have um, be fit and healthy. And it's up to you. Uh, I can sky it a bit now, uh, you know, the age I am, not far off 80. Um, I still have no trouble getting my, my commercial. Your job re relies on you being fit and healthy and maintaining your commercial pilot's license. And you're no use to yourself or anyone else if you lose your medical. Poof, off goes your, your license. So, right food. For a start, I had a friend, a uh, funny, uh, funny, Eru Pamari. I went to school with him, and he uh, hell of a nice Maori guy, and um, he uh, turned out to be a, a, um, a heart surgeon, and of course he smoked all the time, and his genes weren't quite right, and. Um, he died at uh, 47 from a heart attack. I thought it was a bit ridiculous, but he was one of those guys that should have lived for a long time because he was good for society. But anyway, he was on TV once because being a learned gentleman that he was, and uh, the uh, interviewer said to him, um, oh, Doctor, how do you know whether you're healthy or not? And I always remember this because I cracked up laughing and he, he replied, well, his reply was, well, it's quite simple really. If you do a floater or you do a sinker, you, you're right, you see, so you've got to do a sinker. Floater's no good. And get your diet right. So that was his answer on TV. I never saw him on TV again, but it, never mind. Okay, so food is really important, you know. Eat, the old school stuff, uh, you know, three meals, good breakfast, uh, keep away from the junk, bit of junk's fine, uh, keep your sugar down, etc, etc, and stay healthy. So exercise then becomes uh, exercise, um, walking, Riding a bikes, swimming is really good. What happens in a flying, if, especially if you're doing big hours, you sit in one position all day and you don't move enough. So uh, swimming is excellent. Uh, it gets everything going and it gets you puffing the heart going, all your joints. Uh, that I remember top dressing. I, um, you're sitting pretty much one position all the time, you're doing calisthenics all day, you're fit and strong and everything else, but, and working, and your muscles grow, working the hopper lever, and that's how you, you know, got big shoulders and that. But I got a really sore shoulder, and I went to, uh, got that bad, I went to the doctor and he had a look around and he said, um, oh yeah, um, what's not happening is because uh, it's, you've got your joint up here, the gristle is growing over it and, and it, when you get up and the joint rolls to it, it's painful. And I said, it's got to be more than that. It can't be that simple. He said, no, you're not using your joints. So uh, he said, uh, I'll give you a cortisone injection in it, which he did do. And then he said, if that's not any better in a week, come back and I'll manipulate it for you. I said, thank you, doctor. Uh, you've been very kind. I will never see you again which is what happened, but I went around and I kept doing this, it was really painful, but I was just shoving the gristle away from the ball joint. And because I'd been sitting there day after day just doing this, whereas if I had been swimming, that would have never happened. Okay, enough, aren't we?
Um, so, uh, just think about your exercise. You don't have to run a marathon or anything. With food, attitude, coming to work, healthy, well fed, sleep. Okay. So you do need your eight hours. You think you're he man and oh that's only for kids and other stuff. But I always sleep eight or nine hours. Um, and um, it, it's really important. It's hard to when you have young kids and you have early starts and and um, you work late and there are other things to do and the phone rings, etc. etc. But you've got to be uh, okay, at a certain hour, just put the phone away. Um, that's it. Uh, I have ways of curing people. They leave a message on, they, I can see they've rung after I've gone to bed. So when I get up in the morning at half past four or five, I ring them up just to educate them and say, Oh, did you ring me last night? Oh, what's it? who's that? Oh, it's Andy here. Did you ring me last night? They never ring me after that, later than my bedtime, because they say, oh, I'm long gone to bed. And so that fixes that, there are ways and means. Think about it. Um, so sleep is, it is uh, vital because, you, like, you know, hot day, flying, long hours, you don't get a bit dozy, and we'll get on to that uh, Maybe in another episode. Uh, uh, so, 